So we had direct COVID-19 expenditures amounting to 12 billion Ghana CDs. We had the banking sector cleanup costs amounting to 25 billion Ghana CDs. And the excess capacity payments amounting to 17 billion Ghana CDs. And the data shows that the three items, when you take COVID, banking sector cleanup, and the excess capacity payments cumulatively amounted to 54 billion Ghana CDs. And that is the equivalent of 7 billion US dollars. Three items, 7 billion US dollars that of expenditure which had to be taken. You couldn't say you wouldn't spend to rescue the banking sector because you are in trouble. The, the economy will collapse. You couldn't say you won't pay excess capacity payments because you have power outages. Uh, you, you couldn't say you wouldn't spend on the COVID because we had a, a, a job to save lives. So to put the expenditure on these three items in perspective, it is important to juxtapose it against the total expenditure releases on some of the government's key flagship projects, including the free SHS, the one district, one factory, planting for food and jobs, development authorities, the Ghana card, Zongo Development Fund, NAPCO, teacher training allowance, nursing training allowance. The data shows that the expenditure on these flagship policies that I've mentioned, the total expenditure by government on these flagship policies over a five-year period amounted to 15.6 billion Ghana Ladies and gentlemen, following the Russia-Ukraine war, energy and food prices skyrocketed globally. For many advanced economies, inflation reached 30 and 40 year highs. Inflation in Ghana has increased 29.8% in June 2022. Global supply chains were disrupted and shipping costs increased by over 1,000%. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, before COVID-19, Ghana was borrowing some $3 billion annually from the international capital market. But following COVID-19, the international capital markets have been largely inaccessible by emerging market countries like Ghana. With the challenges in accessing the international capital market, balance of payment support was needed to bridge this financing gap, stabilize the economy, and create the space to implement structural reforms and restore debt sustainability. And this is really the reason why Ghana had to go to the IF. I should again note that Ghana has been hit with a quadruple whammy, a quadruple one. The energy sector excess capacity payments, banking sector cleanup, COVID-19, and the Russia-Ukraine war. We have been uh, hit by this quadruple one. If you, and I say again that if you take out the fiscal impact of this quadruple one, Ghana will not be going to the IMF for support because our fiscal and debt and balance of payments outlook would be sustainable. Of the four factors, COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine war were external, and the other two, the banking sector cleanup and the excess capacity payments were the result of policies of the previous government. Let me give you an analogy to make my point. If you ask a carpenter to roof your house, and he roofs this house, and suddenly the roof collapses, without any rainfall or wind, suddenly you have a collapsing of the roof. Will you not blame the carpenter who did the roofing? Will you not blame the carpenter? But if the carpenter roofs your house and the roof collapses because there's a tornado and a storm which has blown away roofs and windows and walls of many houses, will you blame the carpenter? Will you blame the carpenter? So, let us understand the context. Let us understand the context. 
In one situation, you will definitely blame the captain. In another situation, you will blame the tornado.